Hello and welcome to this week's video. We're kicking off with a q and I I haven't done a Q&A in so long. I absolutely love watching like my favorite creators and just getting to know a little bit more about them. So I thought it would be really fun to do a get ready with me with kind of my current makeup routine while I also answer some of my most asked questions. I asked on my Instagram for things that people wanted to know and I went through those and also things that I just get like regularly in my comments. So I put it into different categories categories. The first one is personal stuff and just to start it out for if you may be new here or maybe haven't followed my channel. My name is Natalie. I'm 23 years old and I live in Florida. I am married. I got married young and it will be three years in April of this year which is absolutely wild. Some questions I had gotten asked because I haven't always lived in Florida was would I ever move out of Florida and my answer is yes because my family still lives in North Carolina. I hate being far from them but it's not anywhere like near on the horizon. I always imagine living close to my parents or like my brothers and everything when I have kids. But with that being said, I absolutely love Florida. I've always been a summer girl. I love the warm weather here, so I don't really picture me moving anytime soon. And maybe I'll end up here forever. I don't really know. But I guess the quick answer is yes, I've considered it, but no, it wouldn't be anytime soon. Next question is what is your religion? And for those of you who don't know, I am a Christian and I go to church on Sundays. That is something that is like a big part of my life. I like to think of it more as a relationship than a religion because it's not about like a set of rules that I have to follow in order to be good enough. And really my faith is mostly about the beliefs that I have and the fact that God in my life has been such a pivotal point in bringing me peace, bringing me clarity, giving me hope, making me confident, like so many things that make sense in my faith and then also in my life that I'm living. So yeah. Next question is, do you own your house or are you renting? And we own our home. Um, we rented an apartment for the first two years of marriage and it was amazing. I absolutely loved apartment living for a time. I really liked the fact that everything was just handled. You didn't have different home projects that you were trying to do. We bought our home early last year and it has been the hardest but most rewarding decision. I absolutely love owning a home. And along with that, I got some questions about what is our next house project. That is making our backyard an oasis. I want to walk into my backyard and be able to host parties and have people over and have pool days. And right now it's beautiful. We did the fence and we have our pool, but it definitely needs a lot of work. So that's next on the list. Next question is how are you so confident and some things about people just not feeling as confident. And I will say that is a really difficult thing to be on social media, especially with scrolling and like posting so much of what I do so many insecurities that I never had before that I just do now because I've seen other people. So having smaller lips or having a bigger nose or having texture on my face, all of these things that like I just didn't really think of and then suddenly you hear people talking about how those are wrong or they're fixing them. And I'm a big advocate for you have to do what makes sense for you. So if that is what you wanna do and what will make you more confident, then all power to you. Personally, for myself, I haven't dipped my toe into doing any type of like changes to my body because I view it like this. We all have our pros and cons and some things like I listed might not be my absolute favorite about myself, but then other things that I love. So I love the color of my eyes and I like when my skin gets tan and what are other, <laughs> what are other things? I like that my hair gets good volume in it. And so I try to focus on like those positive things that make me happy rather than focusing on the things that are negative. And confidence, it really comes with within because I swear to you, everybody looks so much more beautiful when they're confident. And I know that that's easier said than done. But if you can focus on those things that are so beautiful about you and realize that you're so much more than your appearance, you will be so much happier and just focused on it way less. So I hope that somewhat helps. I know that confidence things really have to be internal and something that somebody goes through on their own. But yeah. That is my recommendation. Next category is work and what is your job was a question I got so many times. Um, so I feel very lucky and blessed that I get to call social media my full-time job. I work on Instagram, TikTok, LTK, Pinterest, 
YouTube, all of those things on different sponsorships. I will say it's like different than you think though because 95% of what I post is not sponsored. It's just like organic content that I'm coming up with to do maybe 5% of sponsored things with companies that I love. So majority of what you're seeing is not sponsored content, but yeah, sometimes it is. And I always really appreciate all of the support on anything sponsored because it just helps me to be able to continue posting and doing what I love and I love you guys. With that, how long have I been doing this? So full-time since I graduated college in 2020. Wait, that's so crazy. That seems like a long time ago. But I originally got my degree in communications and PR, and I just wanted to work for like the marketing side of a company. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go to college, but it is so intimidating choosing your degree and like what you wanna do for the rest of your life. Um, so then I graduated during the pandemic. I could not get a job. I interviewed so many places and I was already doing a little bit on social media. So that was when I took it full time. Next question is how did you get started? And this one is kind of funny because I have been taking pictures from as soon as I got a cell phone. I think I was like 12 or 13 and I would have photo shoots. So I would curl my hair and I would ask my friends to like come take photos in my little thrifted outfits that I would have. But then when I was 16, I started posting on Pinterest and I got like followers from there. People would come to my Instagram and be like, oh, you're the girl that I saw on Pinterest. So that was kind of crazy. Like I started growing on Instagram. Um, and I think when I went to college at 17 was when I first hit 10K and I, that was like such a monumental moment. I had started having brands like ask if they could send me a t-shirt in exchange for a post or something like that. And it truly was like such a cool feeling, but I feel like there wasn't very much information out there on it. So I was just having fun. Like I was a college student and having fun with it. And then I would say it really ramped up or started to change when TikTok came about and like you could just grow so much easier with TikTok. I love this lip liner. It's from ColourPop, it's called Oh Snap and it's like almost the exact shade of my lips. So I feel like when I wear it, it just hardly looks like I'm wearing any makeup. The next question is what advice would you have for someone starting out? And that would be to post consistently, especially like I was saying with TikTok, it is so much easier to go on the for you page and gain followers and all of that stuff. But if you don't post, then you have a 0% chance of ever making it because you obviously have to have videos out there for people to be able to even follow you. So posting consistently, having good lighting and those certain places that you like to film. So in front of a window with a ring light, I don't use a ring light as much, but I know that a lot of people do and that's very helpful. You do not need fancy equipment, just a phone. And I get a lot of questions about like how to start posting on YouTube, honestly, 50 to 70% of the content that I film for YouTube is just on my phone. Josh and I have found that we just like having that better. So literally just use your phone for everything. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, you can use the back camera. It's great. And yeah, the hardest part is just starting and then keeping up with all of that momentum. So just start posting what you love and find something that you love to be good at, whether that's food or fashion or makeup or Honestly, even like the Emma Chamberlain effect of somebody who's just relatable, like you do not have to be doing something interesting. So many people love like their cozy comfort creators that just have a great personality and are posting. Next question is your friends have their own brands. Does this ever inspire you to start your own brand? And the answer is yes. I don't have much more information than that, but it has always been a goal of mine and I can't wait to make that happen one day. Also, I love all of my friends' businesses and support them 100%. Last work question is what does your husband do for work? I get this so many times because people just see Josh in the videos like he's in a lot of stuff that I do and it seems crazy but we work together full-time so he also got his degree at the same college like that we met at and his degree was in marketing he worked for a couple of different companies um, in their marketing department like an ad agency a furniture company and some of it he really enjoyed but he also started doing freelance on the side of website design graphic design all of that so I was working from home on all of my stuff and then he was working on all of his stuff and I just got so busy. I couldn't manage everything I was doing. I needed help all the time for all of the different partnerships and just everything I was doing. So it was kind of a seamless transition. He joined in on what I was doing and we've grown so much since. He is so helpful. Like 
everything that he does behind the scenes, it's funny because I know people have that perception of social media that it's like, what do you do all day? But there is so much to be done. Um, so yes, he and I work together full time and it's gone really well. So that brings us into relationship questions. And one of my most asked probably because almost all my friends have kids is, do you want children? And the answer is yes. Um, we do definitely want to have our own family. I always have thought of being a mom as just a really big goal in my life. So I hope that I get to do that one day. Um, I just don't feel ready yet. I think we got married really young and I was really happy about that, but I've just been enjoying like working and moving into our house and traveling. And I know that you can do all that with children and we probably still will. But I think for now, I'm just happy with it being us two and I look forward to that happening maybe in the next couple of years. I got some that were saying, do you regret getting married young? And I feel like you can obviously tell I don't regret getting married young. I will say that Josh and I were together for four years before we got married. So we definitely had like gone through a lot of, you know, just being together. Like when you're with somebody, you learn each other so well. We were each other's first relationship. So I feel like that's what gave kind of like a slowness or a hesitancy that I didn't want to just jump into things. So even though I got married young and I was 20, we had graduated college. We had been together for four years and we had been graduated for almost a year when we got married. So I feel like it just kind of happened in like a natural progression and I don't regret it at all. I do feel like we were very prepared for that and we took steps like premarital counseling and just having a lot of those like deep conversations to where we really knew what we were getting into. So we're gonna go into some of the health questions that I got. Um, with the first one being, are you on birth control? And I am not, I was on the pill. I got on it, I think a year before we got married. Um, I was on it once before in high school when I did Accutane, but I, that was only for like six months, I think. So I did get on birth control before we got married, like a year before, and I was on it for two and a half years. I didn't have like a crazy experience. Um, I did notice that some of like hormonal things, so maybe it being acne or like stomach issues or stuff like that, I felt like was maybe related to the pill. Um and like mood swings and stuff, but I, I could never really pinpoint it. I just knew that we wanted to wait a while before having kids and I didn't like the idea of just being on the pill for so long. I know for everybody it's like a personal decision of what you decide to do, but now I do natural cycles. So I take my temperature every morning. I really wanna get the aura ring so that it just like does it because it is kind of hard to remember to do it every morning right when you wake up but I take my temperature and you have green days and red days. So on the green days, like you're good to go. On the red days, you need to use another form of birth control. Um, and I've been doing that for a year now. And I mean, we haven't had any type of like scare or anything like that. So it's worked if you're consistent with it. What do you do for workouts? Um, I love classes. I do Pilates and I feel like I started to notice a big difference in like the toning of my body when I started to consistently do Pilates but a class just keeps me accountable. So I love yoga, bar, Pilates, all of that. I also do like going to the gym, but I think I go through phases with that where I go like in and out of that. Another question was, what do you eat in a day? And I've wanted to do one of these YouTube videos because I get inspired by like what recipes other people are making, or I love watching Paige Loren's um, YouTube videos. She does a lot of like cooking, which I think is cool. But I don't know, I know that those videos can be a little bit like food can be kind of triggering for people just because we compare so much. And I like to think of food as fuel and how it can be good and beneficial for your body. So basically I try to eat on like a healthier side. I try to get a vegetable and a protein and some good like carbs and all of that stuff. But I don't focus on it too much. Um, if I have like cinnamon rolls for breakfast, then maybe I'll do like a healthier option for lunch, so a salad or something. Or maybe I'll do like an egg scramble that has a lot of good like proteins and fats and everything for breakfast and then have, I don't know, other foods. I don't like to think of things as like good or bad. It's just what you're craving, but trying to lean more towards those like healthier veggies, having fruits, all of that stuff, and making like a healthier alternative when I can. Next topic is friendships. I got a lot of questions about friendships. Um, I post about my friends a lot, so I feel like that makes sense. But one of them was how to have good friendships overall. 
And I think that this one starts with yourself. Um, I always say this, but in order to have good friendships, then you have to be a good friend because why would somebody who is like a really great friend want to be with someone who is toxic or bad or something? So that can look like not gossiping. And I know that is very hard because everybody likes to get the information and the tea and like what's here and there, but support them, be the person that brings them up in a room. like. When somebody's talking about good things, you would talk about the good things in your friend. You celebrate them. You're sad for them when bad things happen. You cheer them on. You put effort in. Um, I would say probably in the beginning, like don't put too much pressure in like, oh, I've invited her to this and she hasn't invited me to that. And like, don't make it a game of stuff, but like, you know that feeling of when you're in a good friendship. So put effort into those good friendships, cheer for your friends and you will attract the right people. Next one is how do you deal with competition and jealousy in friendship? And this is a big one because no matter how healthy you are, it can be very difficult to watch people that you love get the things that you want when it's not your time yet. So whether that has to do with like success in a job or having children or getting married, a relationship, a opportunity, a travel thing, like whether it has to do with money, any of that stuff, it is very difficult to watch people get really good things that you don't have yet. But I think that that's such an amazing skill because life just isn't fair sometimes and we're all going to deal with our own stuff. But if you can learn how to put competition and jealousy on the back burner and really allow yourself to cheer on for people even when they have those good things that you don't have yet you will have great friendships like overcoming that hurdle and being self-aware and conscious that like oh i'm feeling jealous right now i need to deal with that feeling on my own because that is not that other person's burden to bear and you will have so much better friendships for it last friendship question is how do you deal with confrontation this word can be so scary. I used to think of myself as someone who hated confrontation. Like if I get a text that says, can we talk? My stomach drops, I'm nauseous. I need to talk right that minute. My whole day is ruined until this is figured out. Like I can't move on. And I know some of us like, especially sensitive girls are a little bit more like that, but learning that in friendships, especially with people that you like live with them. I always talk about this with my college roommates, but it's like, if you live with someone, you're going to deal with something. They're going to fold towels differently than you, or maybe they leave dishes until the morning when you always did them right after. And it's like, those things don't have to make or break a friendship. And all that you have to do is bring things up in a loving way. And it can be so scary approaching that topic, but just having a simple, like even a compliment sandwich of it, of like, hey, I really value our friendship and everything that it means, but it's really hard for me when I come back from work and the dishes are left in the sink and I just wanna like go make a pasta and that's left in there. Do you think you can make an effort to try to clean those after you use them? And then be open to hearing what they have to say of like, oh yes, I was running out the door and I'm totally gonna do that later, but I can make more of an effort. Like it's both people meeting in the middle. But I always think that if you don't bring something up to somebody, then how are they ever going to fix that or change that? And then that's kind of on you to continue to let things like fester in your heart of being so irritated because then every time you come home and the pot is in the sink, it's gonna be like, she did it again she doesn't respect me. She doesn't care about this friendship. And you're piling on things that it's like, maybe the other person just isn't aware of. So I don't think you have to be a super confrontational person, but I think addressing issues as they happen, instead of gossiping about them, you just bring it right to the source and then allow them the opportunity to change. Obviously, if you bring something to someone's attention and they don't change, then that's an issue for like maybe a more serious topic, but it's like you at least owe them that initial confrontation. Now I'm just gonna answer a few simple ones just scrolling through like my Instagram messages of different questions that people ask to end off the video. How is your tennis journey going? So if you've been following along, I play pickleball a lot and I really wanted to get into tennis. So I've taken a lesson and Josh and I have gone to play a little bit and we're excited to get better. I just really want to be good at tennis this year. Any new trips coming up? And I do. I have a trip I'm going on in the beginning of March. Very exciting. Thanks spring break vibes, girls trip, and I can't wait to share that. I got a few questions about my favorite mascara, and if you followed any of my like makeup anything, I always use my Thrive mascara. 
I also really like the Tarte tubing one. I think that makes my eyelashes look better, but the Thrive one is just so amazing to take off and it makes the lashes look good. How do you plan trips with your friends? Um, you have to be along the same lines of budget and expectations. So some people really love travel. That's like, go, 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 wake up early in the morning, have activities the whole time. Other people are like, let's chill for a day, maybe do one activity a day. So finding people that you have similar travel is good. Um, but yeah, I am definitely the planner in the group. I make a big Google doc. I go on TikTok and search the place for like recommendations, look up photos. I love seeing photos. So honestly, TikTok and Instagram are like my favorite for planning a trip because I just look up so many things. I want to have a visual of it and I make like a big Google doc of everything I want to hit. Bucket list destinations. A few that come to my top of mind of places I really want to go is Switzerland. That's Josh's number one. I wanna to go to some of the like smaller islands in Greece that are a little less traveled. We did Santorini and I would just like to do a little bit more, maybe like local ones. I would love to go to Africa and do a safari or something really crazy cool. I wanna to go to the Gold Coast of Australia and just explore and get to see that and all the animals there. And I feel like those are the top of my list right now. Okay, well, that is all the questions that I have time for today. I didn't wanna to get too long-winded, but I did definitely wanna open up and share some of the like new recent things and personal things about me. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I cannot thank you enough for just being like the best followers. I feel like we get so much more of a personal connection and like even responding in the comments, having that more unique openness and everything makes me so happy. So thank you again for watching this week's video and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and your week. I'll see you next week's video.